Good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Fifth favorite day of the week. You know what? I woke up this morning. I was tired. I was nice and warm in bed. I really, really didn't want to get up, but I thought, hey, doesn't matter if it's the fifth day. If I can get up on the fifth favorite day of the week, the rest of the week is gravy, easy peasy. Um, so happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, quick reminder, keep watching our YouTube channel. We upload the better quality video there. Uh, like I said, we're always taping off three cameras. We have a, uh, a Facebook, an IG, and a camcorder. They're also on our, um, on our web page. Uh, we have a GA Kids TV section. And don't forget on our web page too, we do also have our blog. So tons of information we've got for you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys saw our June Bride uh, giveaway that we are doing on our social. Huge response. We are so happy to be teamed up with people. I'll touch more about that on Friday. Um, and we, uh, we can talk about that. Have a look at it, check it out. It is really, really cool. So today, I thought since a lot of us now, we've got our, we've got our eye, it's the long weekend coming up. We've got our eye on the long weekend. We know what we want. We want to we want to see the nice weather. We want to start getting our plants out. We want to make sure they're hardened off. Now is the time. So let's talk about garden pests. There, you know, I started uh, when I started putting together what I wanted to speak to you guys about this. My list was getting out of control. There are so many things uh, in a garden. That can, that can work against us. And what I have to do is I have to dial it back. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of the big categories. So if you can't recognize my incredible drawing, this is a slug. So this is part of the gastropods. We're gonna talk about slugs, worms, which I know sounds uh, contradictory since worms are good for the garden. Garden friends is tomorrow. So don't worry about that. Uh, we're going to talk about, like I said, gastropods, worms, and grubs. We're going to talk about bugs. Uh, that's a wasp. Grrr, very different from a bee. We're going to talk about birds. We're going to talk about mammals. So, what we're going to talk about here are our grubs, worms, and gastropods. And I think all of us uh, who've done gardening, you know, a few years ago, keeping my garden as good as I do and being out there all the time. Harry and I were growing a pumpkin and we had this amazing bright orange pumpkin, the flower was done, we had this big pumpkin forming and it looked amazing and we were so excited and we were watching it and then suddenly we realized, oh hey, what's happening? Why is our pumpkin not getting any bigger? And we lifted it up and all of the bottom had been eaten out by slugs. So, as much as I try to believe that I, I, I don't want to combat nature, I want to live with it, sometimes we can get an infestation. You hear that bird? I'm going to be talking about him soon too. Sometimes we have an infestation so bad, we need to work on controls. And there's a number of things you can do. Please, when you're using controls, always read the back. I don't have time to go into all of the details today. Always read the back and see exactly what you need to do. You have to be careful. Some of these, they're just poisonous for bugs. Some of them can have effects on wildlife, kids, and pets. You have to choose, again, like anything, fertilizers, soils, sun, shade, everything else. I wish there was one easy answer I could give you guys. There isn't. You have to get the solution that works best for you. So, um, Read the back, understand what you're doing. These work amazing for those gastropods. And a snail is a gastropod. A snail is just a slug with better PR, right? You've got your slug with his big beady eyes. Okay, and everybody's like, ah, gross, a slug. I don't like that guy. You put a twisty shell on him and everybody thinks they're adorable. And everybody makes them into wall art and things like that. They are exactly, exactly the same. They're both gastropods, and they will devastate, devastate a garden if you get them in. And again, like yesterday, your best, your best defense against them is cleanliness. Get rid of areas that they like to hide. Uh, they like obviously shade and damp and leaves piled up and things like that. So get rid of that. There's grubs that live under your soil. The most common one we get is a chinch bug. 
and it eats, oh, a little owl fell over, but uh, we'll get to him. Uh, this is a, uh, is a grub killer, and the chinch bugs live under your lawn, they chew the roots off, they leave horrible patches in the grass, and they need to be taken care of as well. And then the last one I touched on was worms. Now, any gardener will tell you that the earthworm is great for the garden. And you know what? Few worms, and that's few worms, we're gonna write that out. Few worms. How's that for chaotic writing? It's almost like a worm, look. Oh, you got to turn it into a worm. Few worms, there's nothing wrong with them. They aerate, they leave worm castings behind. They also are massive, and they can leave uneven round things. They hate vibration and noise. Best way to get rid of them, get out on your lawn at two o'clock in the morning and play the drums. That is also a really good way to get a uh, noise complaint with the uh, city police. Been there, done, I'm just kidding. One time my neighbor knocked at my door at two o'clock in the morning. I would have been really angry if I wasn't awake playing the drums at that time. But anyway, I digress. Dew worms, you can help dissuade them with carbolic soap. Again, you're gonna follow the directions, non-poisonous, very fragrant, it irritates them and helps get rid of them. But you're not really gonna be able to get rid of them if your neighbors don't and everything else. They can live six feet down. So again, we can explain how to use all these products. If you have one of these problems, ask us and we'll answer it better. We're just touching on what you can use and showing you some things. So now we got bugs. And bugs can be anything from the little green aphid, that's his big long proboscis nose, sticks it into the plant and he pulls the sugars out, to the wasp on the first page. Ants, all of those critters can be out there. Um, and what you often see is aphids and ants are together. And the reason for that, there's my ant, I give him eight legs, maybe he wants to be a spider, I don't know. And there's my ant, and the ants go and they harvest the sugar from the aphids. So there's a, there's, a, there's a relationship there. But the problem is that ants have their own problem and benefit in the garden. That is, they'll chew through roots, they can really disrupt your lawn, things like that. Aphids will kill your plants. Who hasn't had a summer barbecue disrupted by wasps and things like that? So wasps, this easiest way. Again, stop it becoming a problem. So this one here is called Get Lost Wasp, great name. Uh, I think Harry might have come up with that one. Um, and what this does, if you can see the picture right there, you hang it in the tree and it looks like a wasp's nest. Wasps are fiercely territorial. If there's another nest there, they'll leave. They'll go somewhere else, they'll go to your neighbors. <laughs> but most of the time, they will not hang around because they'll think there's something there. And then we've got Ornamental wasp traps, functional wasp traps, anything you need for that. Should they already be in, you don't know what to do. There are sprays as well. For the aphids and the ants, I brought too many products. There's an ant out powder, sprinkle it around. One shot is not gonna do it. One shot, you are gonna be fighting ants forever and ever and ever. Like I said, try and learn to get along if you can. If you really can't, use products like this. We've got trounced, amazing product. You spray it on the bug, the bug's dead, but if you spray it and a beneficial bug lands, a ladybug, um, a butterfly, they're gonna be fine. So again, any, any bug that you've got coming in, getting to you guys, we're gonna help you take care of it. Again, those are just a few. The next, we get asked about a lot, are the birds, okay? And hear that guy chirping? That's a house sparrow. Uh, they can invade uh, other birds' nests. They can be really quite aggressive. Uh, they're non-native. Uh, they can swarm your bird feeders and the other birds aren't gonna come in uh, and have a look. The problem is you get things like this or you put up the ribbons to keep them away. Well, a lot of times it keeps away all of the birds. So how do you combat it? What you can do is build them their own nesting boxes. 
So you'll notice a lot of nesting boxes on the front, they'll have different diameter holes. That's for different birds to fit into. So make sure you get one that's comfortable for them. Make sure you get a smaller one that isn't that comfortable for them and you'll encourage the other birds. Uh, magpies, to limited success, set up an area where you feed them away from your other feeder. They can be a real problem. They're a real pest. Uh, woodpeckers, same thing. But if you put these up as well, you stick it in one spot and you never move it, it doesn't take long for the bird to realize it's not alive, it's not there. You've got to move it around. This one works okay if there's a wind. There's one, boing, 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 boing. Um, if there's a wind, it moves, the birds don't like that. They think it is alive. The head rotates, hey, it rotates 360 like a real owl. Who cares? No, I'm kidding, I care. Um, but this thing is great because it does move. So birds can be tricky, but we got solutions for those two. Again, try and accommodate, try and work with instead of fighting against. I find you're gonna have better results. And then, you know what, I didn't even draw a bird. Oh my gosh, I'm slacking. Let's draw a magpie. Very big, and his body, there's his legs, and then he's black and white striped. He's got a beady eye. Oh, ho, ho, look at him. He's planning on ruining your garden. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. So, you've got to keep an eye out for them. Again, you know, they come, they'll disrupt everything, separate them from your other feeder. And a lot of times, that creatures of opportunity. If they see a feeder filled with other birds, they won't go to it. Okay, there's too much competition. They're, they're, they're opportunistic feeders, they're gonna look for an empty feeder. So if you can encourage other birds in, you can help keep the pests out. Again, it's all about establishing that control off the beginning. And then we've got mammals, and that can be honestly everything from Rudolph, who we all love dearly. We all love Rudolph on December 24th, but on May 13th, when he's eating your vegetable garden, no, not so much Rudolph. And then you know what? A few months ago, who didn't love the Easter Bunny? But now that the Easter Bunny is eating your lettuce, eh, not so friendly. So we've got prob uh, you know, the, sorry, there's also mice, uh, there's voles, there's skunks, there's squirrels all kinds of mammals in Calgary. I've had really good success at keeping them away using a number of products. There's plant skid, there's get off my garden gel, there's critter ritter, and there's blood meal, and there's a few others as well. I love blood meal, it's pretty much the active ingredient in plant skid. A lot of people use this, the animals are repelled by the smell, so there's no damage. If you're gonna go this route, Please be careful. Look at the front. What do we see? Three numbers. NPK. It's a fertilizer. You start dumping this in your flower bed, you've completely changed your fertilizer program and you've added a ton of nitrogen. The other thing, eventually they're going to get used to this. Use this for a month, then change it up to Critter Ritter, then change it up to this, then change it up to this. The constant change, same as moving the birds keep some guessing, they don't trust it. That wraps us up guys. These 15 minutes go by way too quick. Um, I wish we had longer. You know what, if you guys get us to 10,000 followers, we can speak for 60 minutes. I don't know if I actually physically can, but let's get us there. Uh, tell your friends, share our stories, let us know we've got a ton of good things coming up. Tomorrow is Garden Friends. I'm way happier to talk about Garden Friends. Have a wonderful fifth favorite day of the week, everybody, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone.